Every monster gets blast damage or take away all ranged monsters. All monsters get two extra armor. Summoners don't give any buffs. There are so many rule sets to Splinterlands that sometimes it's hard to keep track of, especially if you're a new player. So today we're gonna to talk about how to deal with that so that we can win more games, earn more DEC. So stay tuned. Hello everyone, my name is Luke. This is my play to earn channel where you guys watch my play to earn journey. This is going to be another Splinterlands guide because I think Splinterlands is the best play to earn game right now. And you guys have been enjoying these guides. So I'm gonna try to keep making them as I can. And thank you guys so much for watching and supporting this channel, even getting over 200 subs. Thank you guys so much. And if you have not watched my silver guide video of what cards to rent, you're gonna wanna do that first so that you can rent enough power, you can rent the right cards, and that's the deck we're gonna be using today, the same account I did that video. So it should be the same cards in that video. And as we take on these different rule sets, I'm gonna use these exact decks. I'm not you know, using the super powered legendary cards that are you know, $200, okay? This is anyone with a little bit of DEC can rent these cards and take on this strategy. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do as a new player is to go to this website, Splinterlands Fandom, the wiki rule set. I'll try to link that in the description and comments. Hopefully I remember, if not someone else do it. And this is gonna give you all the rule sets. So if you're only used to playing in novice or bronze three where the rewards are so small and you've seen my guides to rank up and get into silver, well now you're gonna be facing all of these rule sets. So there are a lot of them to learn about and you can go to this website, you can see them all. You can even click on some of them. Some of them don't have this information, but some of them do where you can click on, they'll give you a little strategy guide, you know, aim true. Okay, no point in using monsters with evade or flight because you're gonna not gonna be able to dodge shots. So they'll give you some strategy guys, even some suggested summoners. Some of them are, you know, the more expensive ones. So you're probably not gonna have the summoners for that and a little bit of monster help as well. Now, because some of the rule sets don't have strategy guys or what summoners work best for this guide, I'm also gonna be working on my own guide and linking another Google Sheets like I've done in the other videos with my thoughts of what summoners, you know, my top favorite five, my strategy notes on the right side, as you can see, it's not filled up. So give me some time to do that. We'll see at what point I finish it, just depending on, you know, life stuff. So don't get angry at me if it's not all filled out, but hopefully this should help because this will be exactly the summoners and monsters that you should have uh, in the silver guide renting deck if you watched that video and followed along in my previous video. So go to those resources first. I'm not gonna read through all of it and explain all of my thoughts because Honestly, that's gonna be a super long video and probably not very helpful because, you know, sometimes rule sets uh, change up where there's two of them. Uh, sometimes, you know, a, a rule set can have, you know, one thought in theory to it when you have 15 mana versus when you have 50 mana. So what I'm gonna do instead is give you those resources and then I'm gonna show you about five to 10 example battles today, how I set up my team, how I think about the rule set, the mana cost, which decks are available, and then hopefully through that you know, example of these battles, you'll be able to understand my thinking and apply it to your own thinking and use those resources to win more battles. So let's jump into some battles, play some games. I'm gonna try to give a good variety of rule sets so it's not all the same and show you guys different examples. So there's a couple things I like to do first before creating my team. You wanna read over the rules if you don't know what they are. This is base uh, back to basics where monsters lose all abilities and range attacks can be used in the first position no matter what. Then you can see what decks that I uh, can choose from here. And so I like to think through, okay, what are my rule sets? What are the decks and mana cap? And what kind of team do I like to create using this rule set? Well, to me, for back to basics, because no one can have uh, magic reflect, no one can have void uh, to you know stop these magic attacks, what I like to do is create a magic heavy team and then uh, what I'd like to do is, okay, that's what I'm thinking. What has he recently played? Any cards or monsters that I see that could potentially counter that? Well, no, because the water deck can't be used in this and he's gonna lose all the abilities to take away magic damage anyways. So that's kind of the thoughts that I'm thinking through. So we could either, either uh, you know, pick uh, the speed deck or we could pick maybe an extra health. I typically, let's see, uh, which one do I have better magic monsters on? 
So here we have about, you know, six different magic monsters to choose from. In the life deck, I got four, some with higher health. I'm gonna go back to the fire deck for the extra plus one speed from my summoner. And then I'm gonna throw out a couple monsters. This guy has at least one armor. Again, the back to basics is gone, so he's not gonna have a shield. He's not gonna have last stand, so maybe not worth it to use that. The flame imp though, uh, hopefully, can survive long enough and then now I need to go and maybe find a tank he's not gonna be able to heal up uh, maybe one with a good amount of armor then I could use lava launcher because it has uh, well I only have eight mana left so we'll, we'll use living lava we'll have one mana left so we go back to just like okay let's throw in a random one mana card no abilities there so it's really just to tank up an extra shot so i'm going to put it right here so that if my living lava dies it can take up one more shot all right so he used the same summoner here let's see what his idea was obviously he you know didn't really recognize that you know you lose the snipe ability so he's going with just heavy ranged damage so i think with magic damage i might be able to kill him although i'm a little slightly worried that the ranged damage might be more than my magic so we'll see how this plays out we'll speed it up because uh if you really want to you can slow down the video yourself and he is getting through my tank here and so it's looking like this might be it's gonna be very close because he's gonna do a lot of damage and potentially kill this guy yeah okay so you see i didn't win that one uh, unfortunately you know he had a better strategy to use the ranged a higher range attack with monsters that have a little more health and armor so you know that was a loss there but you can see at least the strategy behind what i was thinking and the strategy behind what he was thinking was you know load up heavy on range damage and it just happened to be that he did enough damage to take out my tank and then get to my back line so that's a loss i'm not ashamed of that though <laughs> you're gonna lose matches there's no way to win 100 as you saw in my other videos i'm shooting for like a 66 percent win rate if i can win or loss though hopefully you get the idea of how i'm thinking and strategizing about the game though Next rule set, range attacks may be used in first position. I don't really pay attention to that because, you know, usually ranged monsters you don't want to put in front anyways. It's just kind of a, a last measure if your backline happens to become frontline. Only common and rare. So we're going to lose any epics and legendaries we have rented or bought. And then I come up here and I say, oh, okay, well, he's using the death deck over and over again. And he's either taking away uh, my melee damage or he's taking away range damage for the most part. All right, so to try and counter the death deck that he's using, I'm going to use the life deck and I'm gonna use the strategy of, let's just try to keep my tank alive as long as possible. So we're gonna use the shield bearer to taunt. We're gonna give the extra double heal. We'll use the armor smith as well. We're going full force into this. And then we have uh, two spots left. I wanna get some backline damage going against his comp here so we're gonna pick the lone boatman maybe and well that only give us two mana let's see if we can get a three mana and a four mana to attack the back line we'll just use oh uh, okay this is not the perfect setup here so instead of going for back line i'm just going to try to do tank shred here by using the peace bringer and maybe the pixie for some magic damage so let's see how that works out. All right, so he did what we, he thought we were gonna do was either give the minus one melee or the minus one range. You can see he was trying to do a lot of snipe damage, which uh, is gonna go all straight into my tank because he has taunt. So as long as I can heal up enough and get enough shield, I should be able to kill his haunted spirit and through that win the game. If my guy dies first, then we're screwed. So let's see how this plays out. So you can see he's gonna do damage to me and all I'm gonna do is just heal right back off of that. So far, he's barely touched my tank. This time around, he's gonna do a little more damage, but we should be able to kill his tank here and heal back up. So you can see just through that, I already know I'm gonna win the game because I killed his tank and he's obviously not doing enough damage. To even get close to doing that to my tank is I'm just gonna heal up with the double heals and armor so we can skip to results and there we go, we got a win. So the rule sets on that one weren't a huge factor. It was more just trying to counterplay his death deck. 
All right, this time around, we got odd ones out. Only monsters with odd mana cost may be used. I hate these ones because <laughs> I always forget which monsters are even or odd, so it always throws me off a little bit. Uh, we can come up here and see, okay, these are the three decks he could use. He's used a dragon deck, which was a flying, might have been an earthquake battle potentially, and he's used the death deck of the minus one melee. So for this one, uh, whew, odd ones out. Okay, so for this, last time he used uh, the dragon deck or the minus one, he didn't seem like a huge counter to magic damage. So even though we can't use the water deck, we can use Delwyn plus the life deck and just load it up with magic damage. We can get the gin for the three magic damage plus one health. We can use the temple priest. Uh, the five mana is going to put us at a really low amount of mana left. So let's use the serpentine mystic and see if we can find a tank here that's going to be decent enough for us. Maybe the silver shield assassin. Uh, I don't think there's a three. Well, in the dragon deck, let's see. There's a three mana here. Let's see if there's a two mana. Oh, wait, no, I forgot. <laughs> it's again. Uh, I hate the odd ones out, man. This one's annoying. Okay, so we'll just go with this comp. Ah, uh, it's a little risky, but let's try it. The one thing I don't like about Delwyn is that he's a five mana card. So it, it gives me less monsters to use overall. All right, so let's see this matchup. He's not gonna be able to touch my tank because I have shield. So his range attack and his Pelicor is gonna do nothing until I shred through this tank and the Haunted Spirit tries to do damage. He's gonna snipe me with this, but seven health here for my snipe monster means that I'm probably gonna win this matchup before he can kill off my backline. Plus I have Affliction, so hopefully once we get to the Haunted Spear, I can stop his healing and kill him even faster. But let's see, you know, some of this is luck, obviously. And I do land the Affliction, so that's gonna be nice. We're gonna shred through this and we should have an easy victory from here. And another thought is, that's why I like having Delwyn, is magic damage is so strong in the meta right now. So even if, you know, the water deck is out for that battle you can use delwind to use the life deck or fire deck for another potential magic heavy team all right so now we're up into an earthquake battle and a health of all monsters is going to be the same whoever picks the highest health monster that's going to apply to every single monster which now gets me thinking okay i want low level or sorry low health monsters that do a lot of damage because based on this rule set they're going to get a, a ton of health anyways so that's going to be huge plus earthquake is going to mean two melee damage to every monster that doesn't have flying so that's going to be a factor I can already see he likes to do heavy magic damage as well, but because it's an earthquake rule set, we're obviously going to use Bright and Bloom. I told you to rent him in my guide because, well, you know, he makes every part of your team have flying. Now this is where it gets tricky though, because I wanted to use a bunch of magic damage. So we also could consider using Ulrich and seeing how many uh, monsters could we get with flying. That is another option because what I want to do actually is use the Venari Wavesmith and you know even though he doesn't have flying he'll give two armor to everyone and two armor will take a earthquake shot on himself so he should be able to survive and then we can come see what else do we have for flying we have the bandit it's not a great tank we could use the kelp initiate with the two extra armor might make him survive long enough even without flying and then put the bandit in in second place so you can see even with the bloom because of the health of equalizers being uh, such a huge rule set i kind of want to use this instead of bright and bloom although if he has any magic counters then i'm pretty much just going to lose this because all of my damage is magic once again but let's try it and see what happens so he does go with the bright and bloom as expected but he uses a nine health card you see here, which means all of my magic damage dealers, which would usually have one health or three health, now have nine health. That's why I'm saying that rule set is so huge for characters with low health, but high damage or magic damage, because all of a sudden, all of my cards are tanks and have high damage where his 
you know, are just normal tanks with normal sets of damage. He does have two heals though, but even with that, I have nine damage just from my characters. So I think I should be able to kill him in the second round right here. Yep, here we go, Earthquake. But again, because of the high health and the armor from the Wavesmith, it absorbed the flying, or sorry, absorbed the Earthquake that I wouldn't take damage from if I didn't have flying. So you can see here, that's how I'm thinking about it. Even though the Earthquake rule set was huge and I normally, if it was just Earthquake, of course I would use the you know flying summoner here, but you can tell with this extra health, how important this magic damage was to me so that took precedent over the earthquake but of course then i tried to find monsters with flying and that is how i thought about how to play this round and we're going to get a nether w on the board all right another earthquake battle and this time ranged attack monsters may not be used meaning the life deck is going to become less valuable because there's a lot of range and tanks up in the front uh, death as well likes to use a lot of range um, besides the you know haunted spirit healing there is a little bit of magic damage but not enough to make it worth it which means in my mind water deck is probably going to be the most potent here but does he have any, anything that could counter me well he's got the kraken which is a taunt and he's got the spirit miner which i don't have so he's got better water deck cards potentially than me but will he use them with the earthquake and you know that's what i'm thinking even with the life deck you can see the life deck i don't love because it doesn't have many flying cards it's got a couple here and with no ranged attacks being able to be used i just feel like the life deck here is not a great option because i would have to rely on magic damage with no flying besides the pixie so we're gonna risk it by using Ulrich and just hope for the best here. Same kind of strategy here. We're gonna load it up with flying creatures and the Wavesmith for the extra armor here. We do have a lot of mana left over. So now I'm gonna come over here and say, okay, what could I use from my tanks? Well, none of them are going to have flying, but the sea monster could heal himself up plus the two armor, the earthquake hit. If he doesn't take too much damage, he might get a heal off, although it's hard to say, <laughs> you know. And then we have nine mana left over. So I'm actually going to, let's see, do I want, do I want more magic damage or should I balance it out here with the sandworm? I'm going to balance it out and try to take out his back line. You know, I could argue the captain's ghost might be helpful for the extra magic damage to tear through, but if he has a magic counter, the sandworm will be helpful for at least having some potential to take out the back line and maybe win us the game. Let's try it. All right, so you can see this is what I was worried about. He is going for the minus one magic damage on the summoner, which is going to hurt my chances. Plus, he has the frozen guy here. He didn't show that in his recent matches. I was thinking he had that, though, because of the Kraken. So if I thought about it more, maybe I wouldn't have loaded up all this magic damage here. But, you know, it's just one of those things that you never quite know. So it looks potentially like a matchup I'm going to lose because he's probably going to shred through my tank here in round two. But we'll see maybe with the Sandworm if he hits all of his shots, which is, you know, not always likely. Maybe we can uh, still win this game. We'll find out here. So round one, the taunt misses. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's not good. If the Sandworm had hit there, then I feel like I could have had a good chance, but there was a 30% chance to miss because I had one speed here versus a four speed. Second time around, he is gonna get him, and now none of my magic damage is gonna do anything to this guy. So unfortunately, unless, nope, even with the sandworm, I'm going to lose this game. So, you know, you can see my process that, I, I feel like I had a good strategy, but knowing that he had better cards for the water deck, I could have maybe avoided it and tried a different deck to counter it. But I had a feeling that, you know, he, the other decks weren't gonna win me. I think I could have used death deck here though if I replay this. And maybe what I should have thought of was, hey, if we could use the death deck and do the magic reflect summoner, then maybe that's a potential to win the matchup because then my magic reflect would at least kill these two guys. But honestly, these two tanks may have still defeated my uh, death deck. So 
uh, let's see, yeah, there was a death deck, so maybe that would have been a better idea in hindsight. All right, let's see if we can sneak a couple more battles into this video. We're gonna have only monsters with even mana cost, and monsters do not get any armor, either from summoners or from buffs. So that, you know, takes away the, you know, Wavesmith's armor, so we're probably not gonna see Wavesmith here. He does like to use a lot of magic damage, and then he probably used the Earth deck. Uh, he's got Mylor, so Mylor is one to worry about because we're not renting Mylor. We can't do a Mylor versus Mylor matchup. And that's gonna mean every melee attack we do if he uses Mylor is gonna have thorns. So that's what I'm looking for him to do is either give us magic or thorns, but because the Wavesmith can't be used with the uh, armor and he doesn't even have an even mana cost. So I doubt we're gonna see the full magic team. That is my that is my thought here. So if he's gonna use Mylor, what I like to use is a team uh, fire deck or the death deck to get a lot of ranged attacks off and not have to kill myself with thorns. So I'm gonna use the fire deck, but I'm gonna use it with this dragon guy so that we get the plus one armor and we can use our dragon deck monsters. So I could use uh, Chihuahua for my own thorns, but uh, the eight mana is a little high, so I'm still gonna go with Cerebus and hopefully he lasts just long enough because I want to use, oh shoot, I forgot the Lava Launcher is the wrong uh, mana cost. So that's that's gonna be a pain. I was gonna look at to use the Lava Launcher. Lava Launcher, so instead, let's see how much range we can get off here real quick. We're gonna use the Pyromancer for the Blast, the Spark Pixies, the Fire Spitter, maybe Pyromaniac, no, we need, yeah, okay, let's Okay, let's use the Bowman. It's gonna have one less attack, but I do want a something in place just in case uh, the Chihuahua dies. So we'll we'll use the Bowman, put him in front of the Spark Pixies instead. Fire Spitter in back because he has flying, so hopefully he'll miss. Pyromancer, we want to stay alive long enough because he'll do the blast damage. And there we go, he used my lore like I thought he was going to because he wasn't gonna use the water deck with no armor. Uh, so I didn't really think about Chihuahua losing his armor. That was one mistake in thinking of in my rule set. Also, I'm really stupid because I used the dragon deck with the plus one armor, which I should have just used the one with flying because uh, I forgot no armor. So I, I sometimes that happens to me when you're looking at two different rule sets You focus in on one and you start overthinking it and you forget so that's that's something to be aware of I just made that mistake you can see even even me a, a month and a half pro at Splinterlands <laughs> makes some mistakes here We might still have enough range attack to win, but I'm afraid he's going to kill off uh, my tank before we can win this game so it is a little of a worry here the blast is going to get rid of his chickens though so that's at least good and then i'm going to kill off so so far so good but i'm going to run out of tank space here soon so i need to do a bunch of damage before because my ranged attack monsters cannot do anything from first place i do get a nice miss there but i'm running out of damage the blast damage is is there Okay, all right, so there we go. My range attack, even with my flawed thinking on forgetting about armor being gone, we still pick up the W there. So that one was a little bit lucky there, <laughs> forgetting about that rule set. And uh, you can see how I like to counter my lore though, is a lot of range damage. All right, so here is one with no magic. So that is pretty important, no magic battles, which means Let's see, he's got Mylor again, so we can look to counter that. He has used the death deck. So I could either go with the double heal shield up life because he can't use any magic. I might be able to survive that, but thorns would also do damage. Or I could look for the death deck, haunted spirit heal, and just a bunch of ranged damage. Uh, I'm gonna go with the life deck because no magic and the plus one armor is gonna help out here I feel like with the double heals we might be able to win this I'm not gonna be able to have a ton of damage afterwards though It looks like I'm going to have six so I could do one and two or I can do the evangelist and get three plus 
remove flying just in case so might as well there even though i have one extra spot i do have uh no i don't have wait oh yeah i'm not on my main account i don't have the furious chicken at zero mana so let's see if, uh, if this one works out or not all right again uses mylor again if you see mylor most of the time people think that it's super op card which it is it's a great summoner but people can overly use it because i know i do that on my main account and so if you see mylor in their lineup half the time they're probably going to end up playing mylor all right so thorns are a stomping me out but even that did not do a ton of damage you can see if i can get through his tank then uh, some of my other champions will be able to do more damage to him and again the double heal looks to be enough in this strategy even with thorns the extra armor and the extra heals he's not going to be able to do enough damage to me so we do end up winning this one again all right back to basics here which means no abilities and four or less mana monsters for the little league which it's going to make this one tough because we only have the fire and the death deck so for this i would initially just see okay which four mana monsters do i like from uh which deck better is it better to go with that deck or do i feel like without abilities as well the four mana team uh, from the fire deck is better i feel like honestly the death deck may be better and what i'm thinking is because we lose all abilities there isn't going to be much magic damage coming from really either deck maybe a little bit i could see more ranged attacks being done because you know no melee monsters will have sneak there will be no snipe anything like that so i'm going to get my tank out there and then just front load as much damage as possible maybe put one magic in front just in case my tank dies here uh, i'm looking for other four mana maybe i'll even switch to three mana and get another two range to attack off put my twisted gesture in last because he has more speed which just means he'll be more likely to hit so i'd rather have him survive than these two guys uh and then do i want more magic damage or do i just go with a simple for i could get another tank in just in case maybe i'll do that in case animated corpse dies all right so he's gonna go for the melee damage interesting i thought he'd be using more range so we're gonna get the minus one range on the spark pixies which is good he did pick cerebus though that's what i normally do in little league when it's four or mana less this is one of the best tanks of the game for four mana but because there was no abilities that's why exactly i didn't go for it because he has no healing so actually this makes the death deck better for that so we'll see if that worked out his extra melee damage is going to be a pain to deal with though so maybe i should have tried to counter melee instead but again it's all a guessing game I still feel like I should win out here because of the higher range damage I have on all these characters. And there we go, we win this one as well. Well, that's gonna be it for today's battles. If this was helpful, please let me know by commenting below because I don't know if showing you guys example battles is worth your time or not, if you've enjoyed this content and it helped you think through your own battles, or should I just stick to the normal guides about you know, which cards to rent and, you know, how much DEC can you earn. So if this was helpful, let me know because it's the first kind of video I've done like this. But if not, you can also tell me that as well in the comments. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.